Welcome to the Chicago Golf Report Podcast, brought to you by ChicagoGolfReport.com, covering everything golf in Chicago. We're, my business partner and I, Kyle Shea, uh, we were actually running another business in Chicago called Catalyst Golf Performance. So we actually had like a kind of in-house coaching academy business um, and had quite an outstanding team around us. So just a lot of really smart people. And you know, we had a lot of clients that were going through that academy. And you know, Super Speed started is really like a side project. It really started as just a uh, uh, something that we were using with our own clients to help them gain swing speed. And we had found it to be working very successfully and, and really with everybody. And you know, we had the opportunity to be able then to test it on a lot of these players. And we found that, you know, nearly 100 percent of players got faster using the product. So um, we kind of slowly kind of pushed into it. We did a lot of R&D, a lot of uh, planning on just exactly how the product was going to look, how the protocols were going to work, how everything was really going to function. Um, and we had that opportunity because we were really there running it as like a second business inside of our academies. Um, and then, you know, we, uh, Kyle and I really had the foresight, I would say that we really felt like this business was going to be the one that could really take off and, and really scale on, on a bigger level. Cause we had opened a number of different locations with the coaching business and it was a great business. We, we very much enjoyed running that and enjoyed the personal contact with the, uh, with the clients and, and all of that. But at the same time, like the scalability of any type of business where, you know, you have to be in a room with somebody for a certain amount of time uh, is very difficult. And, you know, we certainly saw the potential of super speed being more of a product-based business connected with that online coaching element, uh, which I really think is the part that's really set the business apart is really staying with those people once they buy the product. So they have a lot to do and work with for a long time. Um, yeah. I mean, it was really, it was like 2016 when we really went all in on super speed. Uh, it launched in the fall of 2014. So it was about a year, a little over a year and a half later, where we where Kyle and I really decided that this was going to be the uh, the number one thing and we were going to go for it. The product itself is uh, surprisingly straightforward, right? It's it's literally like a club with weights, different weights at the end of it, and um, yep. I, you know I think it really seems like the magic came from the protocols that you've created, like the how to implement the swings and what to do to kind of stretch your ability to swing faster. How did you come up with those protocols? How did you learn how to use what you designed? Yeah, so we were first introduced to the concept where the first time we had ever seen it was at the World Golf Fitness Summit with TPI in 2012. So uh, Dr. Tom House did a great presentation talking about uh, training that he had been doing in Major League Baseball with pitchers. So actually talking about using different weighted balls and um, they call them velo balls in base baseball, but basically had been working for 15 years with Major League Baseball pitchers in order to help them gain arm speed and, and increase pitch speed. And we saw that and he had a couple ideas of how to potentially uh, apply it to the to swinging sports. And, and with, that was kind of where we said, Okay, what's this all about? We looked back at all of the research that had been done over the last 60 years, a lot of it in track and field, um, javelin throwing especially, and then a lot of research that had been done in baseball. And then we kind of piggybacked from there to really figure out how to apply it to swinging sports in the most efficient way. Um, and that, that was really where a lot of that came from. So it was, it was based on a lot of good scientific research that had been done on how to help athletes move faster by not making them stronger, by not necessarily changing the motor programs that they are using, but really just to kind of get the neurological system firing on all cylinders and, uh, you know, kind of reprogram the brain for what it thinks is normal as far as how fast that player can swing. Um, so that's really where all of that came from. But like I said before, I think that's really what separated us a lot from other training aid companies. A lot of training aids out there, I mean, you get the training aid and then it might have very simple instructions of what to do with it. You might use it a couple of times and then, then it's, it's sort of done. And maybe you like it, maybe you not, maybe you don't. In my opinion, and personally in my closet, I have a whole lot of those things that I don't really use. Um, that was really the difference. Super speed is not about, you know, it's not about how 
proprietary, if you will, the actual club is. It's a very simple design, as you say. Now, those weights, we tested a lot to be very specifically weighted around a player's driver, and that pattern of weighting is very important. Um, but I would say that uh, maybe 25% of our research and development really came into building the product, and 75% of it really went into optimizing those protocols uh, to make the training as efficient and effective as possible for everyone. And I think as we've seen or you've seen over the years is the end result is, is quite dramatic. It's really surprising how much of an improvement that golfers on all levels and obviously tour pros all the way down have implemented super speed. Can you talk a little bit about, um, were you surprised at how much of an impact your product can make in terms of helping golfers improve like that? I mean, obviously at this point, we're somewhat humbled by the fact that, I mean, I think that our products have made a significant impact on the coaching space in the golf industry altogether. I mean, almost to the extent of creating like a new category of training. Like, you know, players always had their mechanics program and their fitness program, and, you know, they had their equipment fitting, but now, I mean, players have their speed program and it's like, there it's a separate category now for it so obviously that's kind of a, a humbling thing to see happen especially with all the best players in the world but i'm not shocked to see it work like that because the initial studies that we did with our players and we had 54 players in the in the first test study we did once we really got down to this weighting group structure and i mean we only had one player out of 54 that didn't see a significant increase in swing speed over that period. Mm -hmm. And that player actually had some injuries that were going on. So there were kind of extenuating circumstances in that case. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, on average, we saw a 5.2% increase in swing speed in that very first study. And now like with tens of thousands of data points, we're still hovering right around that 5.2% average speed increase for players all around the world so it's kind of wild how math and statistics work like that but uh, i mean we're not really shocked because it's exactly what we saw in the very first study even on a small sample size um it's just continued to kind of proliferate and now it's in the bags of so many players around the world and we're still seeing really kind of rave reviews from those players of how much speed they're increasing mm -hmm. uh, i was just on a i was just on a uh a podcast uh, i don't even remember where it was, but it was, it was maybe last week. And um, we had some live questions coming in from some people that were watching the, the, the thing live. And we had a great question come in about club fitting because he's like, well, you know, I got fit for clubs back in November and my speed was at 104 miles an hour. And I just got tested after doing this training for the last two months and I'm at 113. Like, do I need to get fit for clubs again? And we're like, yep, <laughs> probably so, um, but you know, Results. But you know, those kind of things are just, you know, we, we, they really are kind of commonplace for what we, uh, what we see as results in the training. Just for comparison's sake, then, when you talk about that person, they went from 104 to 113, so nine mile an hour uh, increase. What does that translate in terms of distance wise? I mean, it's a ton. I mean, obviously, there's more variables there that go into that, right? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how efficient that player is at striking the golf ball. So mm -hmm. all of those things matter, like the physics of how the club head and the ball interact matter. But if you want to talk optimal, like I would say optimal for uh, converting club speed to ball speed is about one and a half times. Uh, you know, if you look at, so if you're looking at nine miles an hour of club speed, you're, you're looking at about 14 miles an hour of ball speed. And the best real number that I that you can get, again, all things created equal, optimal conditions, you're looking at, you know, usually around two yards, you know, a little over two yards per mile an hour ball speed. So, mm. I mean, that player is looking at almost 30 off the tee. I mean, that's huge. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I was wondering um, when uh, you tell people about the product, they say uh, amateur golfers and, and whatnot, where do what's the best place for them to buy super speed you say just go to the website or is it in retail and what's where do they uh where can they get a hold of super speed what i tell people is get it wherever where, wherever the easiest is for you i mean we sell super speed golf everywhere now i mean it's at pga tour superstore it's at dick sporting goods it's at local golf shops all over the world it's 
at uh, you probably your local golf club at this point likely carries it. Um, and if that doesn't work, I mean, we sell it on our website. You can get some real cool like bundle specials and things like that at our website that are only offered there. And then, I mean, you can also get it at online retailers all over the place as well, including Amazon and some of those big ones. Uh, last question, Mike, uh, you talked about the protocols and the importance of that. And also it sounds like that it once someone purchased super speed, it's, it, they could work with their local PGA pro, but they could also implement themselves. It sounds like, is, is that the case? Absolutely. I mean, we built the system so that anyone that, you know, has space to swing a golf club, wherever that might be. Uh, can take advantage of this training and get results out of, out of uh, doing the super speed golf training. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's easy to follow video tutorial protocols. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say the majority of people do this at home. I've always looked at it and we've always tried to structure it as like a good, better, best kind of environment, right? I mean, we, we wanted the baseline to be good so that like if you just buy the product, do it at home, you follow the videos, you're going to get results. Better, I would say, is that you buy the product and maybe you're also doing some work in the gym. Maybe you're working on functional mobility. Maybe you're working on strength training or whatever it might be. You're working with in some ways to improve your body physically at the same time. That's going to be better. You're going to probably get even better results. Best would be you know, what a tour player does. They have a whole team around them. They've got their speed training program, their fitness training program, their mechanics program, and all of those are working in sync to be able to help that player optimize their results in every way out on the golf course. So uh, yeah, no matter how that, that goes, you can really find the best way for you to get involved with this training and that can fall on that spectrum somewhere. This has been the Chicago Golf Report Podcast. Visit chicagogolfreport.com right now for exclusive discount offers, Chicago Golf News, and in-depth event listings.